What's up, guys? Hello, and welcome to Fight Picks with the Pros. My name is Garrett Marchesano, and today we're going to review four fights on the upcoming UFC 263 fight card featuring Israel, the last style bender Adesanya, first Marvin, the Italian dream Vittori. Today, I'm joined by, as always, Chris Holds It Down Holdsworth. What's up? What's up? Let's go. Let's go. Introducing Fight Picks with the Pros, brought to you by FanDuel. All right, the first fight we're going to review is in a stacked card. Damian Maya coming in as the plus 194 dog against Belil, remember the name, Muhammad, coming in as the minus 245 favorite. Now, I know Damian Maya is 43 years old. He's getting to the end of his career. This is probably the last fight of his career, maybe one more after that. Um, he loves the fight. He's that BJJ ace. He was called the backpack for a while because he was choking everyone out. Yeah. And uh, I feel like, you know, th they're pushing Belil as the heavy favorite in this. So, this reaction on uh, Damian Maya being the heavy underdog. I'm a huge Damian Maya fan, <laughs> if, uh, if you haven't noticed. Uh, but I love his jiu-jitsu. I've been following him for, for years on years before he even got into MMA. Uh, I knew about his how good his jiu-jitsu was, you know, winning ADC World and you know the wor uh, the world championships with the gi, and he just continues to fight. Forty three years old, he's fought the who's who in that division. He's beat some of the best guys. He's lost to some of the best guys, but he's still in there. That's the crazy thing. Like he, he's had some you know big wins, some big losses, but he's still hanging in there. So I respect guys who are able to fight for this long in general. Yeah. Not only like his jiu-jitsu career, but he's had a full mixed martial arts career fighting the best guys in the world. So I'm a huge Damian Maya fan. It's crazy to see that he's the underdog, probably because he's got a, a couple of losses uh, and he's not doing as well as he used to. He yeah. hasn't looked the best in, in his last couple of fights. But uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, his last fight was against Gilbert Burns, who's one of the nastiest strikers yeah. in the world, you know, in the UFC. That was March 2020. He's 28 and 10. He's got 14 subs. So we, we know him as that BJJ ace. I, I really like Damian Maya. Before I get back to him and talk about some of the props, let's go to Balil, Balil Muhammad. So he's been really coming up quick. He's 18 and 3, four TKOs, one sub. So he's kind of a decision machine. And the last taste we got of him was against Leon Edwards, where was it an eye poke that ended the fight, right? Yeah, it was a poke. Yeah. Eye poke ended yep. the fight. So that ended up being a, a, a no contest. Um, yeah, that was against Leon Edwards. His three losses are against Vicente Luque, Joe Bond, and Jeff Neal. So those are all good guys. He's got this kind of wild striking, wild overhand right he throws. 85% um, takedown offense, which is going to be a big, big stat here going against Damian Maya because Damian Maya has to get you to the ground to, to use his BJJ skills, right? Um, so on the Belil side, what do you think about him? He's the minus one, 245 favorite. Uh, he's a plus 10 to win by points is the only props that I thought semi-useful here. Really not a great bet on him, but what do you think about Belil's game in, in general? Yeah, belil has got the more dynamic striking. He's kind of got that Rufus Sports style. You know, he trains with, you know, Duke Rufus and those guys at, you know, that, that gym. So I can see he mixes up his, his striking very well, his boxing, his kicks, everything in between, and he's hard to take down. And we know Damian Maya needs to get the takedown most of the time. You know, he's finished a couple guys. He, he, he's finished a couple guys with his hands, but most of the time he's submitting people, getting right. them to the ground and, you know, decisioning them off position and, you know, some ground and pound here and there. But we'll see if uh, he's able to get Belil down and keep him down. You know, guys like that, you know, the, you know, Belil's hard to hold down as well. So guys like that, you know, they're kind of hard to mess with when, you know, your main game is trying to take him down. I agree. The one prop I do like on this I want to come back to is that Damian Maya is a plus 480 to get the sub finish. Now, if it does go Damian Maya's way and he gets a little tired, maybe it's in the third round and they're, they've been striking, Damian Maya still has hands. He could, he could strike and he can hold his own with a lot of the best guys in the UFC. Of course, we know he's trying to strike to get on the inside to grapple, clinch, take you down, yeah. sub you. That's his game. There's, there's no secrets here. So Bilal's going to be looking for that. But if he gets him to the ground, I think uh, Damian Maya can sub anyone. So I like that plus 480. To uh, for Damian Maya to get that sub. So if I'm gonna go with my official fight prediction, I think it's gonna be a back and forth. Belil Muhammad's gonna use that 85% takedown offense, stuff a lot of those takedowns, 
It's going to negate, keep the fight standing, and we'll be surprised by Damian Maya, but a lot of shots are going to get through. He's going to hold his own and not get KO'd, but my official prediction is going to be Balil, remember the name Muhammad, by decision. Chris, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'm going with Damian Maya on this. I got to rep the jiu-jitsu flag. Uh, I think he has what it takes to get the takedown, smother Belil, make him work hard up to his feet, maybe even get his back a couple times. I don't think he'll be able to finish Belil, but uh, I think he's just going to edge him out on a decision. He's going to get a couple takedowns, get some good position on him, make Belil really work up to his feet, and uh, edge him out on the scorecards. Okay, I like that. Good pick. All right, let's move on to the next fight. We've got Leon Rocky Edwards coming as the minus 590 favorite wow. against Nate Diaz. He doesn't have another nickname? It's Nate motherfucking Diaz. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Nate Diaz coming as the plus 410 dog. So this is a fascinating fight for a couple different reasons. One, Nate Diaz fighting at welterweight. He picked Leon Edwards as his opponent and called him out and, and called the UFC to book this fight, which I think is probably, I can't think of a more dangerous fight for him than Leon Edwards. Second, because this is going to be such a banger, the UFC decided to do for the first time a non-title, fight, non-championship fight, non-main event, five-round match. So, you know, give the fans what they want to see, five rounds of Nate Diaz. But... You know, the odds makers are saying this isn't the Nate Diaz fight. This is the Leon Edwards show coming in as a huge minus 590 favorite. So that's interesting. So let's start with Leon Edwards. Um, Team Renegade, 18 and 3, 6 TKOs, coming off that no contest eye poke. But what can you say, man? This guy is nasty. He, he has great striking, great range. He's built, freaking comes in there ripped. And he's yeah. got that left hand. Some fighters, Conor McGregor, some of these other fighters have that, that punch, that kind of it's that nasty punch that you don't see coming and he has that type of punch with that left hand he leaps forward almost like he's lunging at you and it's a lot of power and it's hard to stop we know Nate Diaz can take a punch but start off with Leon what are your impressions of his game and kind of his approach coming here against against Nate well yeah, Leon's been been in the top contention for a while now and I feel like he's just like almost that gatekeeper not too many people know about him like he doesn't have a huge following um it, like it took me a while to kind of hop on the Leon Edwards train like, I was like, who's this guy? I keep hearing him winning, yeah. but, like, I wasn't, like, drawn or, you know what I mean? I wasn't, like, they didn't push him. You yeah, know, the media or, like, the UFC pushes certain guys, and I don't feel like they've pushed Leon Edwards. Eight straight wins, like, I feel like he should be having some more buzz behind him, some more some more buildup. Yeah. But I haven't seen that. Uh, he, he's a great southpaw with a lot of power, really athletic. And, uh, you know, we both know that Nate Diaz has had trouble with athletic fighters before. Guys that are really explosive, guys who mix it up well, guys who kick. Um, But he also does really well with people with good boxing. And, you know, Nate has the reach advantage on this one. And we both know Nate has, you know, trained with professional boxers, helping them get ready for the fights. You know, Andre Ward, who's a southpaw. Um, you know, so he's worked with a lot of professional southpaws before. So I don't think the hands are going to be anything for, for Nate. But it just tells us as well how much pool Nate Diaz has for the UFC to do the first time ever a five-round. So that's how much pool he has. I don't know if he had any, um, you know, de- decision or, or, or say who about – if I can get five rounds, because he probably wants those two extra rounds for his, you know, jujitsu to take in effect, his cardio, his cardio to take in effect, because we all know like Nate Diaz is a cardio machine. Exactly. So I think those two extra rounds are going to benefit Nate. Uh, you know, Leon, I think is going to gas out trying to finish Nate. He's going to like he's going to rock Nate. You know, Nate's going to tough it out. He's going to stay in there, and I think Leon might gas himself out. Um, you know, later in the fight, and then once it goes into those fourth and fifth rounds. I'm calling a submission Ooh. by Nate Diaz. I feel like Nate Diaz will get to his back and get a rear naked choke. Wow. You know, Leon said he is going for the finish in this fight. He's got five rounds to do it. He said that Nate has an experience, a guy like him, that's going to put on him like he is to go for that finish, even though he, he has. But, again, this is a welterweight fight, so this isn't this isn't a lightweight fight where he's it's 155ers. These are these are big guys, so Leon's probably coming in there at 180. Nate, again, he bulks up when he comes in there heavier guy as well and you know he's he's gonna cut for this fight on nate's side yeah he does have that two inch reach advantage he always brings a fight he's gonna stand and strike with you stand and box with you i hope he goes for like 
a leg pick to kind of take him to the ground and not just stand mm-hmm. and fight. I, you know, Nate's always down to stand and bang, <laughs> even to a fault sometimes when he's getting pummeled. You know, he could take a freaking shot. So I hope he goes for a takedown. He's got that uh, such a good ground game. And, yeah, if we look at the prop here, he's a plus 410 dog in the fight. Also, by to win by decision or to win by sub, Nate's a plus 1,000. So Damn. if all you out there that are thinking, what's a plus 1,000? If you put $100 on Nate Diaz, they'll give you $1,000 back if he subs them. So it's a 10-to-1 bet, huge odds. These are some of the biggest odds, biggest props on this card uh, for this type of finish, especially for a, a main fight like this. So super interesting. Everyone out there is predicting that Leon Edwards is going to win by either KO or decision because those odds are real low in the plus 100 range. And so this could be sneaky for those MMA guys that know Nate Diaz and that he could be have the shit kicked out of him in the fourth round yeah. and still get a takedown and choke you out. We see him, saw him do it to Conor McGregor with a, with a bloody face. Uh, so if I had to do my official prediction, I think Leon Edwards is not going to be able to put away Nate. I think he's going to stay around. He's going to tease some p- potential subs. But really, where is my heart saying? I think it's going to be a decision win for Leon Edwards, unfortunately. Chris, what was your official pick? Yeah, I got rear naked strangle by Nate Diaz <laughs> in the fourth or fifth round. Okay, I like that. I hope that happens. All right, let's bring up the next fight. We've got Davison Figueredo coming in as the minus 250 favorite versus Brandon Moreno coming in as the plus 205 dog. God, this card is so stacked. So we all know we saw this fight already. Uh, they both fought on the card 21 days later. They stayed in Vegas, turned it around, and fought each other for the strap. It's one of the best fights I've, I've ever seen. It was back and forth. Right when you thought Figueredo was winded and, and going to be done for, he throws a crazy left hook that lands to the body, and Moreno eats it. He comes back. He was full of energy. It was such a back and forth brawl. Right when I thought one guy was out of it, they would come with a flurry and land like three shots, and thinking, holy shit, he's, he's right back in it. Um, so that was a, an incredible fight. But let's start out with, with the champ. 20 wins, one loss, one draw. Nine TKOs, eight subs, very well-rounded, so I know you like that, Chris. And he just – he comes with the pressure. He looks like a bigger guy at flyweight, and he's getting better at, at every fight. So I know, Chris, you've, you've studied him before. You know about him. Um, what are your impressions on Davis and Figueredo and kind of his mindset coming into this rematch fight? Yeah, Figueredo is a, a great champion. He, he can do everything. He can knock you out. He can take you down. He can submit you. And not only submit you with one aspect of jiu-jitsu, he can submit you in all aspects. So bottom, top, in transitions. And I, I just like his style, man. He comes forward real hard, and, he, and he's an entertaining fighter all around. He never backs down. Even if he's tired, he continues to like put on a show. He continues to try to finish you. Once you think he's tired, he's like still he's throwing and take your head off. So I think this is going to be a, a great rematch fight. Both of them are going to uh, learn from that previous fight, you know, go into a draw. But like I said before in one of our previous shows, I think that minus point deduction was a really played a played a factor in in, in the draw and the decision of that of that last fight. So if that point deduction wouldn't have happened, I think Figueroa would have won a decision. Yeah. Um, but you know how that goes; you never know what's going to happen in there. I'm um, talking about Brandon Moreno. I know he just got his black belt, so he, oh, nice. he's a new black belt. Let's see if he, you know, tries to use some of his uh, his grappling game. I thought he fared pretty well versus Figueroa on the ground. They had some really good scrambles uh, all, all around, you know, takedowns, grappling, you know, striking. So I'm interested to see with the the, the more time Brandon has for this fight, you know, studying Figueroa, I think is going to play a little bit different. But I also think Figueroa is going to come in with, in better shape, and he's going to have a better game plan for the second fight as well. Yeah, so they're both coming in their, their first matchup off a of 21 days notice, right? Dana said, hey, I want to keep you guys in Vegas. This was during the heat of the pandemic, so he knew if if Figueroa flew back to Brazil, he'd be stuck there for a couple months. So he yeah. said, hey, let me keep you in a nice hotel here and, and keep you in Vegas and have you fight again. Um, and so now they got full camps. Of course, both teams, as you know, Chris got to review that previous fight, study it, take some notes. So they're both be coming in with their own game plans. So for Brandon Moreno, knowing that he's going to come in with one of the deadliest finishers in the flyweight division, the current champ, a ton of confidence. Brandon has to have a ton of confidence as well, coming in knowing he held his own with them last time, almost beat him. So if you're Brandon Moreno and you're watching that previous tape, you're coming to this fight, you know Figs come with that heavy power. 
what's gonna what do you think is gonna be his game plan and mindset coming into this? Is he gonna go for that takedown, try to scramble it, and he's got ten subs, he's a black belt now. Yeah. I like that game plan. Go for, go for the sub, go for the takedowns. Don't try to stand and bang with them. You held your own, but it only takes one for Davidson to, to put you out. So it's a dangerous game to play. He needs to mix it up. He needs to put the pressure on Figueroa. I don't think Figueroa does well when you put the pressure on him. He's a pressure fighter. He wants to come forward yeah. and hunt you down and finish you. So Brandon needs to take uh, take notes of that and, and, and be the pressure fighter and use his movement. He's more of a, a, a mover than Figueroa is. He moves and, and dances a little bit more, and he's light on his feet, which I'm a fan of. So maybe he needs to use that fluster Figueroa a little bit with those pop shots from the outside. You know, get him yeah. to come in, and then boom, change levels, get a takedown, make Figueroa work back up, get him tired, because we've seen him get tired before. So we need, I think that's yes. the best thing, take away some of that explosiveness, take away some of that uh, that power by, you know, draining that, that battery level from grappling, draining it, draining it. And then once those hands start coming down, maybe we can land some more effective shots and, uh, you know, go that route. Yeah, no, I like that strategy. I hope they're coming in with something to, yeah, to try to slow down Figueredo or else. When he was tired, he was just throwing one power shot at a time. Yeah. If he's at full strength, and he's throwing combinations with power in the third round, fourth round, and Brandon's getting tired, I, th I think it's lights out if, yeah. if that situation happens. But let's take a look at some of these props. Of course, we got the heavy, heavy favorite in Figueredo. Uh, even by KO, is only a plus 200. But this is an interesting one to me mm -hmm. I had to throw on here. Figueredo has eight subs on his record. And I know he's a knockdown, knockout guy now. He's been stacking up the KOs because yeah. he's found his power through his striking, etc. But a tough guy like Brandon Moreno, he, he reminds me of kind of what you said your strategy used to be is – I think he could get him hurt, get Brandon Moreno hurt, and he Moreno drops to the ground, being the BJJ ace. He he goes goes into guard. He finds some protection there, but he's hurt. Figueredo falls falls him to the ground and submits him because you got to hurt Moreno on the on the ground. I can see that happening, and the sub is a plus nine hundred for Davis Figueredo. So that plus nine hundred prop, some people might want to take a look at that. Uh, might might be worth going for on that on that side. On the other side, Brandon Moreno. For him to win by KO or sub is a plus 1,100 and plus 1,300. Huge odds boost. So I can see the same thing on the other side. I think it's got a hard to KO Figueredo, but if it goes in the fourth, fifth round, I can see a TKO, KO. And I can also see Brandon getting him tired and subbing him for that plus 1,300. So out of those three big props, Fig plus 900 sub, KO for Brandon Moreno, sub for Brandon Moreno, which one of those do you think is most likely to happen out of those three? Uh, I think a sub. I think Figueroa can guillotine Brandon Moreno. Yeah. I think uh, you know if Brandon shoots in lazy, or if he puts his head in, in a bad position, uh, Figueroa is the ma a master at the gu guillotine choke. Okay. And if he rocks you and you try to take him down while you rock, I can see him getting a guillotine choke and uh, choking Brandon out. Well, you guys heard from Chris right there. Plus nine hundred submission Figueroa. But let's get to our official fight picks for this fight. Uh, I'll leave this one off, Chris. I'm going to go Davison Figueredo. Okay, I know he's the heavy favorite. I like him as a fighter. I think he's good for the division. I think it's good for him to be the champ. Not to say Brandon wouldn't have his own shine, but I just like Fig swag. Brandon Moreno said he looks like an ugly, dumb a-hole who wants to be Conor McGregor in a recent interview. Man, eh, you know, everyone has their, their own, own swag. Sorry, I had to throw that quote out there. But I'm going to go Davison Figueredo by TKO. I think it's going to happen in the later rounds. It's a plus 200. Uh, by TKO. I like it, and I think it's the most likely thing to happen. So I'm going to say later round, TKO by Figueredo. Chris, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm going to go Figueredo by decision. I think it's going to be a, a very contested bout that's going to go back and forth like the first fight did. Uh, and let's hope it's even a better fight than the first fight because the first fight was a great fight. So hopefully both of these guys did a little bit more homework. They got some new tricks up their sleeves. And they give us a great show. But I got Figueredo making some adjustments. And without that point induction, you know, I think he, he would have won a decision. I think it's going to happen again. He's going to win a decision. Okay. I, yeah, I think a decision is likely in this fight, too. All right. Those are our picks. It's time for the main fight pick of the evening. All right. Let's jump into it. We got Israel, the last style bender, Adesanya, coming in as a minus 260 favorite versus Marvin, the Italian dream, Vittori, coming in as a plus 205 dog. So, of course, they previously fought each other, and it ended up being a split decision win for Izzy, probably his closest fight of his career. 
Um, and really, uh, this is the main event about a lot of people are familiar with Izzy, 20 and 1. He just tried to become the double champ and beat Jan Bohovic at, at lightweight, 205 pounder. So, one of the rare cases to where you have the champion coming off of a loss to defend the strap. So, I thought that was kind of fascinating. He's got 15 TKOs, surprisingly, five subs. Big, lanky guy, six inch reach advantage. And we all know Izzy. He's, he's full of confidence coming in this fight. So, let's kick it off with Izzy. Uh, we break it down fighter by fighter. Um, of course, the champ, Israel Adesanya. What do you think about him? So annoyed of a, uh, Marvin coming into this fight with all the interviews. They're getting each other's skin. But Izzy's ready to go out there and fight. How do you think, uh, what, what's his mentality coming into this fight? And what do you think is going to be his game plan? Yeah, I don't know why this just jumped out at me right off the bat. But knowing Volkanowski just had all the coaches out there in Vegas for tough, I wonder what coaches stuck around for Israel for this camp. I'm sure he worked it out. But oh, yeah, like, you're right. You know what I mean? Like, I was just thinking that right off the bat. Oh, it is but uh, Israel, six-inch reach advantage. I, You know, coming from a, you know, a guy who's 20-0, 20, 20 and 0, a champion, and that loss, I think, sparked just another flame under him. And it probably took him to another level. Yeah. I, I think sometimes, you know, people need certain catalysts to, to launch them to the next level level yeah and you know sometimes it's a loss sometimes it's a big win you know sometimes it's a close fight you never know um and i think this is probably a catalyst for israel to take his game to the next level i think he figured out like hey i really need to work getting up off my back um i also need to stick to what i'm good at but i just need to add in all that extra stuff where uh, that got exposed in in the in the on fight so well, I think he's going to you know, play his normal game and, and look to start st sticking and moving from the outside for sure and, 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 yeah. and win that, that rangy striking game. Yeah, we expect him to come in, right, and play that, 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 exactly, that rangy kickboxing feint uh, to, to negate those takedown attempts. But Marvin's one of the few guys that had success. Of course, we saw Jan Bohovic get a few takedowns against Izzy. Mm -hmm. uh, big weight played a factor in that, we believe, right? So for this one, a little bit more matched on, on the scales but Vittori had he had that skill against him he had that uh, success uh, if you will against him so I hear him talking about standing and banging and fighting oh who Israel yeah yeah that's probably what he wants to do and let's be real like that that win that Israel got over Vittori was what in 2018 yeah 18, yeah, yeah so that was three years ago so all that success Vittori had in the grappling and wrestling I guarantee you, especially a guy like Israel, who oh, he's his bad. his grappling game has has gotten so much better in, in that three year span. Uh, a lot yeah. can be accomplished in that amount of time with that skill uh, of of a fighter and athlete with good coaches. Okay, yeah. so like three years of like really good grappling uh, coaches and grappling training. Uh, I I know he's a lot better than you know previously but we we got to think vittori is probably He's better getting better too, better yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, right um but i don't think the it, uh, it's i think it was way easier to take israel down back then than it is to take yeah. him down now no, it's gonna be it's gonna yeah. be different for sure i think both guys have gotten better but is he starting from so low being yeah. kind of being a kickboxer to really just learning fresh skills yeah maybe marvin torres honing on, on what he already knows but let's talk about him a little bit he's 27 and 4 two tko's nine sub bit of a decision machine as well uh, but after taking that loss against Izzy, he's went on, gone on five straight wins. He's full of confidence. And, you know, he, he talks a big game. He's talking a ton of trash. He's the huge dog coming in this fight. So he's a plus 1,000 to KO Izzy, plus 1,000 to sub him, plus 380 on points. And, of course, he's the uh, money line plus 205 dog. So, of course, everyone's picking Izzy to win. And it looks like by either decision or KO um, are, are, are the low props on that side. And they don't think he's going to sub him. Uh, plus 2,600. Wild. So Vittori coming in this, you got to think his game plan is going to be, I don't care if you told me that you're going to piece me up on the feet and that uh, I'll be scared and try to take you down. I love it when fighters go, oh, you're scared. You're scared. Take me down. You should just stand and bang. Yeah. And uh, so Vittori is going to be going for those takedowns. He's going to be trying to get on the inside, want to grapple with him, want to take him down. To Izzy's credit, he got up pretty fast in the, in the previous fight. He wasn't, like, stuck on the whole round. He'd get up in a minute, get up in two minutes, take a little bit of ground and pound. So maybe that happens again, but if you can hold him down and keep those takedowns going and steal rounds, this is a five-round fight. So even if Izzy pieces him up a couple rounds, uh, it, it could get close. So 
let's say you're Marvin Vittori's corner and you got to tell him a strategy to how to take Izzy down. What, what are you going to say to him, Chris? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, get in his face. Don't let him play that rangy game. Use head motion and level changes to close the distance. You know, use those level changes to land some effective strikes. And then once Izzy starts thinking he, you're getting into that striking battle, that's when you start trying to take him down. Yeah, yeah. Dip under the strike, take him down. Yeah, yeah. Once that hand, those, those hands start coming up thinking, you know, it starts opening up the, the, those entries. Yeah, he's got, he's got a guy. He has got some sneaky strikes to take down, too. I think Vittorio will find a way. I think it's a matter of when he takes him down, not if, and if it's going to be a repetitive thing or if he starts getting tired. So this is an exciting fight. I like it. It's a great challenge for Izzy. Uh, Vittori deserves this. He's a good title challenger here, coming off five straight wins, giving him his best bout to date. Um, so let's get into our official fight picks, Chris. I'll let you kick this one off. Uh, I'm going Israel Adesanya by decision win. It's going to be a, a close fight, but I think he's gotten a lot better from their previous you know, scrap in, in 2018. His grappling, his wrestling, his, his cage defense has gotten a lot better. So Vittori is going to have to work extra hard to get those takedowns that were effective in the first fight. Um, and then I think Israel has gotten better with his mixed martial arts IQ as well. So I got Israel Adesanya by decision. Unanimous. Oh, okay. I think that's a good pick. Even though I think Marvin Vittori is a great uh, challenge, great matchup for him, and of course those props look good, uh, but that's for a reason. That's because I'm going with the champ. <laughs> Israel, the last style. <laughs> and I'm saying Izzy's going to get it done by KO win. I think it's a fight's going to play out. He's going to piece him up on the feet, and I think there'll be some early takedowns, but he'll eventually be uh, negating those takedowns, keep it on the feet. He'll be piecing them up. And Vittori's going to try to get on the inside, and Izzy's going to rip one of those heavy right hooks or left hooks that he has he's putting a few guys away with. And I think it's going to happen in the fourth or fifth round. So I'm going Israel by TKO win. Nice. All right, guys, those are our picks for the main event. Thank you, as always, for watching Fight Picks with the Pros. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel. If you're listening on podcasts, we appreciate you guys so much growing there as well. We'll see you next time. See ya. Hello, everyone. Bruce Buffer here. Thank you for watching the MMA Surge YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and get notified when we upload next.